Hello Internet! Today we are going to be taking a look at Bash, and specifically we're going to be looking at how to initialize your, your shell. Um, so there's a number of different ways to do that, and there's a number of reasons why you would want to do that. Um, so let's say you have uh, some specific environment variables that you need injected into your environment so that you can actually do whatever it is you need to do. That isn't always obvious. There's not always an easy way to do that. You can like export x equals foo, uh, and now if we echo x, uh, if I can type, we'll get foo back. Um, that's great, but if I if I create a new shell, if I restart my computer or something, that's gone. That doesn't exist anymore. And that's not great, because now we've lost whatever it is we, we had previously. Uh, and so typically we want to persist these things, or maybe we have shortcuts that we want to set up. So we want to do like alias, um, uh, uh, something, something like this, LLLL equals, uh, let's do something like that. Uh, and so now if I type that, we get all of this information and it just runs that alias. Uh, so we can kind of use these to kind of uh, get faster things going in our in our shell. There's two important files in the, in this for for the the project that we're going to be working looking at. Um, and I should say I'm working on Ubuntu uh, in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, and so you might see some different things. The, there's a number of different ways to do this. Um, and if you want, you can do like uh, man bash. And that's going to pull up this whole thing. Uh, the files we're going to be looking at are actually documented down here somewhere. Yeah, right, right here. Uh, so <clears throat> there's two different types of, of shells, effectively. Um, there are interactive and non-interactive shells, uh, and or, or like login shells and non-login shells. Uh, and so a login shell is this one, because uh, we logged in and we got here. But that isn't the only way to do that. Uh, we can also just run bash again and, and start a new instance of it. Uh, and we didn't we didn't log in, we just effectively forked our terminal um, and created it, created a new one. Not really a fork, but that that's technical. <laughs> um, uh, so so we've we've created this. Um, and, and so something different happens when we run this. Uh, and run bash inside of bash rather than logging into our computer for the first time and initializing everything. Uh, and so there's two different things that actually control that. Uh, so we have done uh, lsla using that alias that we created. Uh, and so what ended up, ended up happening is we listed out all of these files. The two important ones, the ones we care about, are .profile and .bashrc. So dot profile is a login file, uh, and so these are both automatically generated when you create a an Ubuntu image on Windows Subsystem for Linux. They may not be there already for you, uh, and you may need to create them. If you do, they should go in your home directory. Um, so if you just cd to this tilde, you'll end up at your home directory, and they should be there. Since they have periods in front of them, they're hidden files, so you're not going to see them if you do an ls. Um, that's going to list all the files in the directory, but it doesn't list all the files. If you want all the files, you need the dash a, and that's going to add that. Um, and then dash l is the long version, so ls dash la is going to do the long output and show permissions, who owns it, uh, when it was last touched, and then the name of the file. Uh, and so this kind of gives us a better perspective of what's actually happening here. So these files need to be able to be read by whoever is, is running them, uh, and we just need to be able to actually open them. So we can actually just open up, say, the bash RC. Um, let's, do, let's do the profile first. Uh, so this is going to run the first time we log in. So when we, when we open up our computer or SSH into our computer, this is going to get run once. Uh, and the first part that's going to happen here uh, is actually sort of a bash thing. This isn't always going to be in your sh in your script. Um, typically, these are actually just empty for you. Like I said, they don't always exist. So if it's empty, you may just have to fill this in yourself. Uh, and so what this is actually doing is bash RC only runs by default if it's not. Uh, if it's not a login shell. Uh, and so it's like an exclusive thing. So one runs or the other. In order to get both of them to run, 
this condition is in there so that it actually runs it if it if it exists. Uh, and so that's pretty much what's happening. So what we can actually do is comment this out so that it doesn't run that. Uh, and then we're going to put like an echo in here. Uh, and so again, this is run every time we restart our shell. So if I do an echo, hello, bash profile, something like that. Every time we start a new, every time we start a new login shell, we should get that printed out. Uh, we can go into our bash RC as well. And so this is going to do different stuff. Uh, and in this case, it's sort of hard escaping if it's not an interactive terminal. And we can just insert another thing that says, hello, bash RC. Uh, and so we've, we've written both of those. Uh, we should see that they were both updated uh, today. So if we do ls la again, we have a new timestamp on those uh, profiles. So they were just, just updated. Uh, you can't see the timer on my computer, but that that's the time. Uh, so that is everything. Um, these, like if we're putting new aliases or anything in there, it, you're not going to see them right now. Uh, so if I were to, let's see, um, vim into our bash rc, just as an example, let's export something. So let's export x equals foo. I'll have to remember to take these out. Uh, but that's going to set x to be equal to foo. Um, uh, this is a bad example because I had actually previously set x. So let's change that. Um, and let's set this to y equals foo. Uh, if I echo out y, we get nothing uh, because it, it wasn't rerun again. We don't rerun that script every time it gets modified. Uh, and so there's two ways you can really update this. We can either restart our shell. Um, we actually modified bash RC, so there's actually three options. We can restart our shell, which is going to rerun everything. We can start a new instance of bash uh, because it's a bash RC instance, uh, or, or that's where the profile is. We should actually pull that in again when we, res when we start a new bash inside of this. The third option is to actually source the file. Uh, and that's actually going to ru run the file as your current environment and sort of use everything uh, as if it was part of that environment. Uh, and so if you source a, a file and it has exports in it or aliases in it, those are actually going to get added into, into your environment. So you can use them for the rest of the, the life of that environment. Uh, and so if we do, like source uh, bash rc. We will see hello bash rc because we actually ran that entire file. Uh, and so that hello script got run. But it also means we should see foo get, get popped up here uh, because we actually now have a value for y. Um, and so that is that. Uh -huh. And we need another way to create this. So let's actually start a brand new instance of our terminal like that. And we get hello bash profile. Uh, so it actually ran that and, and showed, showed us what's going on. Uh, so let's go back to our home directory, uh, go here. And we also should have, or we should not have our Y value set. And it isn't. And that's because bash rc wasn't run because this is a new login shell. And we took out the part to make our login shells run our non-login scripts. Um, typically, you probably want it to run both, um, but it doesn't by default. Uh, and so you'll, you'll need something to, to do that for you. Uh, so we can actually add that back in just because uh, I want that. <laughs> and so we should go here. And there we go. Uh, not that. <laughs> what am I doing? There we go. Uh, and so all this, all this is doing is just checking: does the file exist? And if so, uh, source it and and run that. Um, oops, that's not going to work. There we go. Uh, and so that is is basically how we we can do some really basic things with our shell to kind of make it a little bit easier to use if if you need to modify like your path say you're working with uh java for example 
Java requires you to have the the Java folder on your on your path. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna you're gonna run into issues. Uh, or if you're installing Gradle, for example, or or .NET or something like that, and you need you need those as part of your path. This gives you a way to actually add those without having to do other fancy things. Um, and it's probably the easiest way. So there's that. Uh, hopefully it's useful and you can kind of you can kind of use it. I kind of tried to breeze through this and kind of eh, go through it pro- relatively quickly. But hopefully this kind of gives like a, some background on how all of this works. Uh, you may see other versions of this kind of kind of going around. This is a brand new instance, so I, I haven't really set it up how I would use it. Um, but you might see something like Bash aliases, um, which is where some people will keep their aliases in Bash. So those shorthands that they use, um, like I believe this already comes with like LA. Uh, nope, doesn't I guess. Uh, so never mind. But uh, typically, there's like a, a bash aliases that some people use and source that from, say, their their profile. Um, you can also use a bash profile, which does the same thing as profile. Uh, it just overrides the profile. Um, so if you have a bash profile, it should use that instead of your profile. Um, and so there, there's a few different other things. You may see them referred to as different different things. Um, but this is just how it comes set up on, on the Windows subsystem for Linux. And so that's sort of what I'm using right now. Uh, so you can you can play with that. Um, but hopefully, this makes it a little bit easier for you to use your, your shell and terminal on, on Linux environments uh, or anywhere else you're, you're kind of working with this stuff. Um, most of this should work for other um, systems as other shells as well, um, but definitely for Z shell and bash, this is sort of the way to do it. So there you go. Uh, if you have questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, Terminal stuff is not my forte, uh, but it is something that I think we all kind of we all kind of need to know how to do some of it. Uh, so so there's that. Uh, but yeah, till next time. See you, internet.